Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4 and today spawning in the southwest corner of the map playing in red we've got Beastie QT playing as the English and his opponent in the northeast playing in blue we've got Louis MT playing as the Byzantines. Welcome everyone to Cliffside. I hope you guys are having a great morning or good evening or afternoon in fact of course depending where you are in the world we're going to be in for a cracking game. Two of the very best players in Age of Empires 4 and two of the most popular civilizations in Age of Empires 4. Battling it out today on Cliffside, which is a great map, by the way. A very small rush distance between the two players. So it can encourage aggressive play, but also, you know, the walls aren't really needing to be too extensive to wall up and prevent a direct route of attack. And that can often mean that players can suggest they're going for a mid to late game approach as well, which is interesting because these two civilizations, the English and the Byzantines, can do both. They can be pretty aggressive. The English, of course, with the council hall, spamming out those longbows nice and early. And the Byzantines do pack a punch. They can get plenty of units quite quickly from the mercenaries, courtesy of the olive oil. Now, having said that, both civilizations can be incredibly strong in the late game too. English with the enclosures upgrade from the farms, getting them passive gold generation when they are farming. And the Byzantines, of course, having olive oil, which really builds up and they can get some really nice landmarks that make mercenary only units or siege units just for the cost of olive oil. Incredibly powerful civilization in the late game. So it could be interesting, like strategically wise, lots of variations, lots of options for them. It doesn't always have to be council hall either because we do typically see the English open up with the Abbey Kings a lot, of, a lot of the time as well and we could see that today. Either way what we do see is the uh, the classic beastie two farm build which allows the scout then to stay out on the map a little bit longer to try and get as many sheep as possible and there is an olive grove opening here for the Byzantines as well. Now, I would like to say by the way a very big thank you for everyone who's been supporting the channel you know guys are absolute legends thank you thank you thank you you know, regardless whether it's on YouTube or Twitch, thank you, thank you, thank you. A special shout out to the YouTube channel members and the Twitch subscribers. You see the names ticking along the bottom right now. I appreciate you guys so much. Now, if you are new to the channel, welcome on in. If you've seen a couple of casted games and you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do because we'll be casting plenty of Age of Empires 4 content. So you won't want to miss it. Now the Byzantines are opting for the Grand Winery landmark. No real surprises there, but take a look at this. Abbey of Kings from the English. Interesting choice. You might see a bit of a cavalry opening from both players because it's not uncommon that the Byzantines can drop a stable, get plenty of horsemen nice and early. They scale quite nicely into the mid-game with cataphracts, would you believe? We're seeing them a lot more commonly. Maybe we'll see them today. Now, Age of Empires 4 has been in an interesting spot, right? I don't think they're featuring in Gamescom, which is obviously featuring a lot of games in the world, which is a bit of a shame, I think, but we've had that in the past with Age of Empires 4, and then they go on to release the biggest DLC they'll ever have, so <laughs> you never know. Um, I'm kind of curious to see where Age of Empires 4 will take us. I would love to see some more civilizations. I mean, the game's in a good spot, right? Lots of great civilizations already existing. Good balance. I think Siege is a bit of an issue at times, but other than that, we're in a good spot. I know that there have been a lot of pro players leaving the scene, esports scene at least. And uh, they've been playing things like Stormgate and whatnot, but, uh, you know, that's probably going to be just a buzz, you know, it's just come out. So, we often have players trying out new games. But I think the Age of Empires 4 is still very healthy. Long may it continue. Abbey of Kings just to be about to be built. And they're going to go for the water level too. Of course, the cisterns are a big part of the Byzantine economy. Being able to gather resources quicker with the inspiration. 10% in water level 1 increases quite nicely as you go up the water levels. Not to mention, of course, the production conscripti are very nice. For the Byzantines, when they do scale the water level, the production capabilities increase as well, at least in terms of Military production rate. Speaking of which, there's going to be a staple opening here for the Byzantines. Not too surprising, I guess, in a way. I think one thing we really should talk about, of course, is the map generation and the spawn. Of course, Age of Empires 4 is one of the RTS games that does have some, I guess, uh, RNG, random generations. And look at this. This gold is so far forward for Beastie. It's a little bit problematic. And you know what? This spawn is actually terrible for him. 
Because if you thought the primary gold was bad enough, well, I mean, where even is the secondary gold? I guess it's this one. It's it's in an awkward spot, right? Because it's not really back at all. It's, it's very much on the side. It could be targeted quite badly. And this is a really rough approach. Um, map spawn for Beastie, i got to say. And understandably, he's going to go for stables because I think he needs to put pressure on, right? Because the problem with the Byzantines facing up against them is that, well, whilst the English had their own longbows, you know, it's quite typical that the Byzantines do go for longbows themselves. King running on in, trying to get a village kill. Doesn't quite manage it in the end, but that village are very weak. Has to go back to the... Uh, to the base, to the town centre, I suspect. The great thing for the English, though, of course, is he can, he can fight and then go back to the Abbey Kings and heal up. The Byzantines can't do such a thing, so some good micro from Beastie could get him a really good advantage early on. Wheelbarrow coming on in for the English. Just got to be careful not to lose the King, though, because the Horsemen do actually have a faster movement speed, so bear that in mind. 1.88 versus the... I th wait, what? That's kind of weird. Was he charging there for a second? Yeah, 1.69. Because for, temporarily there, the king was charging a little bit. But yeah, this gold is going to be under pressure now, which is a bit of a problem, right? Sure, he's getting upgrades, but he doesn't have any upgrades in terms of the blacksmith just yet. He needs to keep this gold safe. I mean, does he commit to an outpost? Probably probably should, actually, because you will get the... Um, oh, to be fair, he's quite close to the aura in terms of the network of castles. Increasing the attack speed by 20%, but yeah, extending that could be quite useful in that forward position. It's definitely something that the Byzantines will target, understandably so, right? You see forward gold, you go for the forward gold. And the Byzantines probably going to be following this up with the mercenary house as well. Let's just take a look on that, actually. Yeah, there it is. And he has gone for the Western mercenary contract, so we'll be getting longbows out nicely in the early stages. Then can transition into Lanskinesta, and then even the late game Streltsy. I think in this matchup, it really makes a lot of sense to go for the Western Mercenary Contract. Not only because of the longbows early on, but also the mid-game can work really well with Lanskinesta against the English Man at Arms, at least do a job. And then the late game, you know, who wouldn't want to have Streltsy in their army? Beastie, though, getting plenty of farms. Really making that transition early, as the English typically do. It's really going to be about the English defending for the next 5-10 minutes, I think, and down to the Byzantines maybe being a bit aggressive. The other option for the Byzantines is to keep up pressure with the mercenaries and then go to the castle age himself, right? Always a possibility. Speaking of which, yeah, villages are on gold now. I apologize, I think... Oh, no. The resources at the top, I think it was on gather rate, not, not village account. Apologies for that, guys. I know that's a big thing, but it is what it is. I have switched now. A little bit too late because we're probably going to switch over before too long anyway. Apologies in advance. I was about to dive on in. Picks off a village with longbows. Gonna pick off another, most likely. Does slap another. So, tech. second village going down. And does trap in one horse from Beastie. So, gets some value back. But good sniping there by the Byzantines overall. And the Byzantines, you know, getting their own olive groves up as well. They are a bit more expensive now on this patch. So, they have been nerfed a little bit. But look at this. Beastie gonna ride on in. Trying to get as many longbows as possible. I don't think he quite has enough, though. I'm not so sure about this, actually. I mean, there's no blacksmith upgrades for either player, but. I mean, Beastie's taking the fight. I think he just wants to thin down the number of longbows. Understandably so. We'll lose two horsemen there on the tree. Beastie, this is costly now. He's going to lose his own longbows with three horsemen charging on in. He's going to retreat, but good number of batch of longbows still coming in as a reinforcement. I think Beastie loses a lot here, and this is not a fight he can really afford to take. He's going to be pushed back. He's going to be able to escape with his horsemen, which is just as well because they will be able to heal on up. So they're two very weak horsemen there that should be able to heal on up. Hopefully back to full health if you're, you know, a fan of the English. But good engagement here for Louis MT, I think, so far. Good opening. He's killed two villages after all. Good start for him, for sure. And he's going to go to the castle age before too long. He's definitely going to get there before the English. Now, a lot of this progression for the Byzantines really comes down to the water level, right? So the villagers gather 14% extra fast now for the Byzantines. And you compare that to the English bonus, which is just the cheaper farms and the, yeah, I guess a faster gather rate on the food on the farms, which is definitely great, but it's not sort of a, an immediate effect, right? The Byzantines... They start off with 10% right at the start of the game. It's incredibly powerful. Speaking about powerful, that's a lot of horsemen going across, and Beastie's going to try and make a bit of a powerful push onto the back gold if he can. But the map generation has been really kind for the Byzantines, right? Two back golds. Means that uh, Beastie will have it a little bit tricky to, to pressure. But it does have a decent number of longbows. Can't really take the fight, right? Because. Steel Dyer is just about to come in, which Beastie won't know about necessarily, but the big thing is that this is a large number of longbows. 
There comes a point that even horseman numbers are you know, a bit tricky to deal with longbows. You'd have to have a lot of horsemen and dive on in, right? Longbows get a lot of value in big numbers. It will be the Golden Horn Tower for the Byzantines, a great landmark for them to get to the Castle Age. Periodically makes the mercenary units for free, would you believe? So that means it's going to be plenty of longbows. It's such a great unit to have in your arsenal. The Byzantines have got it today alongside the English. Now, he's going to get an outpost on the forward position just as well because he needs that gold. And I wonder what the Byzantines will look to do here. Will they look to get a second town centre of the castle age after getting relics, potentially? Typically, you see players, you know, when they do get to the castle stage, they do prioritise relics. Beastie, will he dive this? I don't think he quite has enough. He's getting iron under mesh, so probably would wait for that. He has got steel diary for his longbow, so might try and snipe a villager or two. Does not pick one up there, unfortunately. It was very close, but didn't quite manage it in the end. Beastie has got to find a bit of time to get to the castle legend himself. Really struggling on gold because of the early harassment. And you can just see how much of a knock-on effect that is. Like the balance of the economy just not quite there for Beastie because he was pushed off for gold quite frequently. And looks like UMT has got the veteran longbows, right? So this is going to do a lot of damage. Iron Undermash not in just yet. So Beastie doesn't... He can't fight this just yet. At least not without Iron Undermash. Having said that, no... Blacksmith upgrades in just yet for the Byzantines. I'm sure that'll be shortly added on in. Here comes the first cataphracts, and this is where it becomes a bit problematic for Beastie. He's going to head back, and if he does take a fight, which he might, it's a bit of a tricky one, right? Because going up against better units, just straight up better units. Horseman yet, yet to be upgraded, but he's got the veteran longbows. He's got a cataphract or two. The big thing is about whether Beastie goes for the White Tower or the King's Palace. It's actually an interesting choice, because if he goes for the White Tower, that will give him a bit of solidity a bit of a uh, defensive prowess and be able to build on from there. I'll tell you what he's going to try and do is try and take out as many of these longbows as possible. Now with the Iron Undermesh in, this could be a decent fight for him actually. It's going to be a great fight for him in the end. I mean, does have a couple of cataphracts joining the fight, tramples on through. But ultimately, you know, it's going to be a good trade for Beastie, no doubt about it. It's going to go for the King's Palace behind this as well, so going to scale that economy. It's a nice approach actually because perhaps the late game might suit the English a little bit. It's a tricky one. Byzantines don't have a bad late game themselves. This certainly will give the edge to the economy for Beastie. It does mean he has to pump out more food into economy, into the villager production. But if he can make it work and survive, he'll be in a good spot. The only issue is that it may delay his time to take up relics. Speaking of which, do we see a monastery just yet for the Byzantines? Not quite. It's a bit of a shame because we've got plenty of wood to do so. What do we? I, I, I felt like I heard something. No, we heard something. We heard something. I'm missing it. It's got to be somewhere on the map. Oh, wait, he can make it from the Grand Winery, right? Of course. Forgot that for a second. Of course, of course. That really does help, actually, the Byzantines. Because, of course, the English will have to build a monastery first. But, yeah, of course, Grand Winery can make the, uh, make the monks. I bet you guys were about to type that in the comment section, weren't you? Speaking of which, if you did like the content that you've been seeing the last couple of days, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. It really helps me out on the YouTube algorithm side of things. And I'll be trying to pump out content maybe every three days. I say pump out, but you know, I used to do daily content, but it just became a bit too much. So I think once every three days of the very best games, I think that's what I'm targeting really at the moment. It's quality versus con quantity. I'd rather have the very best games making it to YouTube. That means you know that when you click on a video, you know it's going to be a banger of a game. I think it makes sense that way because a lot of people are strapped for time these days, you know. It can be tricky to, uh, you don't want to waste time on watching average games, that's for sure. But you still get some value here. We'll certainly get a couple of villagers. Get a raid on the back as well with the horseman. This is great for Beastie actually. This is exactly what he needs to do. He needs to buy time and he does have the gold a bit more secured now. Gonna go for yet another venture. Got some good pickoffs here, but running into some Nimitani, that's not really what he wants to do with the horseman. Does lose a horseman in the end. But he's getting some good upgrades now, the English. Getting the Man at Arms upgrade as well, so getting a bit of a switch, which we typically see the English do in the Castle Age. But the great thing with the Byzantines is he's already got one relic in the bank, another one on the way. Boy, does it help having the Grand Winery making monks. Interestingly enough, we talked about the ability to wall up, and it's actually the Byzantines that have opted to do so. Getting an outpost for the Mangonel in placement as well. So Louis MT, he feels confident playing into the late game. I wonder whether he's going to think about getting a second town centre though, because he's going to be a bit behind on economy if he doesn't. But of course, he will mean he'll get a lot more army in the short term. Oh, the king, could he ride back? No, no, he decides not to, or maybe didn't see it. 
I could have been in some dead villages, actually. Beastie just walling up on the west side and... Yeah, just touching upon that again, the map spawning is really rough for Beastie, right? That forward gold. Oh, villagers with Akratoi. Gonna trap the king. Probably take him out in the end, actually. Cataphract might trample on through. Either way, might not even be needed. But yeah, the map spawn, very rough for Beastie because everything that's back, he's got back berries. Which, okay, fine, he's taken eventually, but it's not something that the English worry about too much. He's got back deer camp, which he's not even going to bother with, most likely. And so the key resource that he would want, really, is gold and stone, and they're both forward. Not ideal. Going to place a bit more conservative walls as well, which is a bit of a problem because the gold's forward for that wall position. It means that Blue Empty could potentially target it. But Beastie's keeping up pressure, though. Nicely done. And he's starting to get some value, for sure. Still more to level 2, but with 3 relics in the bank now, this is actually going to be generating a really nice bit of olive oil for the Byzantines. Because of the fact that, well, when it's in the olive, um, when it's in the Grand Winery, he gets olive oil instead of gold, of course, with those relics. Very nice mechanic for the Byzantines. Means he can get plenty more mercenaries. And Louis also picking up the sacred sites. Go for the one on the west side first. Horseman diving in once more. Does pick off another villager, which is actually pretty, pretty strong considering how much army was there. Okay, he's going to add in a second town center behind this. He's actually quite significantly behind on villager count. Loses the monk, but does get the sacred site. So Beastie will just need to keep one longbow in there just to decap it. No real big trouble with that, though. So this is going to be entering a really interesting phase of the game. The reason why I say that is because Louis is going to pump out a lot of units. He's actually going to have the military advantage. He's got the economic deficit, but that's going to start to become less of an issue now that he's got his second town center, right? So if you do go to the super late game, the early increase in population for the English is becoming a lot less relevant. It's still relevant. It's still big because he might have a bit of a power spike in the next 10 minutes, but he needs to make sure he doesn't lose too many units, right? He's got to trade well, make sure he doesn't take significant damage. Speaking of which, where does Beastie now get gold from? Now, this is going to be running out very soon. It's going to go to the right side, I guess. Cataphract going to be working on the monk. Monk, unfortunately, won't be able to capture that sacred site and did lose the one on the west side. Possibly could take the one in the middle here, Louis, if he decides he wishes to. This is a lot of Viringian guards, by the way. They can work through this quite nicely. Let's get some important upgrades as well. Villages on barriers around the back, but there's an outpost there to defend, so I think the village will be okay. He's going to just try and torch things down. I mean, the King's Palace... It's done a bit of work, but he ideally wouldn't want to lose this. We shall see if he does. Spearman about to go through with the mana from the English. He's going to back away to the outpost, potentially. There is a Mangadel placement there waiting for him, which is actually starting to work on the king. Let's get a couple of good shots on that, actually. Two cataphracts on the west side. Took out the long bowman. Maybe he's going to start working on this uh, palisade. Try and break on through. But with this map control in the middle, I wonder if he's going to send a couple of villagers. It does have a bit of stone brewing in the bank, but uh, not enough for a keep just yet. Maybe he could potentially go for an outpost or two. We shall see. Either way around the back, still raiding with horsemen. Nicely being done there by Beastie. The villagers take care of it in the end. And the thing is that the Byzantines do have Akrotoi, their villagers. Really nice ac activatable ability from the system. It works well for them. Helps him defend, of course. Limitane tanking with the Vringa Guard. A couple of longbows on the back line. This should be a fight that actually... I mean, I think Beastie doesn't win this, even with the network of castles. I mean, sure, with some reinforcements, he might, but this is going to be a good trade here for Louis. King running away, causing havoc around the back. Eventually, the reinforcements actually really help Beastie. Defender's advantage coming in clutch. Louis going to retreat back to the, to the outpost, and it was an overall okay trade, I think. There's always a fight that Louis was probably going to lose in them in the long run because of the, the reinforcements coming in from the barracks that are so close by. Siege engineering coming in for the English and maybe looking to get some rams. We are in the castle age and no semblance of going to the Imperial Age for either player at this point. All villages around the back. It's a distraction. He's to go for the classic distraction, but he does lose the king in the end. A couple of Limitina were on hand to defend. So Louis empty, not taking the bait. Another layer of palisades there, creating a bit of a playpen for the gold. It's a big investment, right? To try and protect it. But it's something that he has to do. Armor clad coming on in. 
Going to make these man at arms from the English incredibly tanky. You can see continuously making those longbows. Going to have a really good number of them. We're starting to see a couple of crossbows sprinkled in there for Beastie. Those will do well against the bringing guards. But he's got to catch up to them first. Again, this is where it becomes a little bit powerful for the Byzantines, right? Extending the water level. Already at water level 3. It's 18% gathering. 60% production speed increase. It's going to get to water level 4 as well, so that's just only going to get better. Okay, kind of fact, we'll go down to the crossbows. Good crossbow numbers, by the way. Having said that, you know, that means that the Byzantines really probably only have to focus on longbows. If you can take down the crossbow numbers, the bringing guards then have a free reign on things. Just being a bit annoying around the right side. Trying to snipe out the king. Doesn't quite manage it, but manages to get a lot of HP off him. He's taking the free sources of food on the map. Here the Byzantines. Water level 4 now in. Giving a very nice 22% gather rate. So despite being behind the villagers, actually overall things concerned, it's not too terrible. Beastie, by the way, did pick up two of the relics in the end, so it's not too much of a deficit in the end on that situation. Gonna try and get the outpost up, but Spear might take out the villager before he manages to build it. Two rams now. He's going to try and break on through, but the bigger problem is the uh, Maganel placement, right? It's actually really powerful considering this matchup. Mostly infantry coming in for Beastie. Going to try and extend that network of castles bonus, understandably so. But this is a bit of a problem, right? I don't know if two rams are going to take down the outpost quick enough. We shall see. I wonder whether the Byzantines will target the rams first or the man at arms. I mean, either way, I think the longbows have to focus on the crossbows to then allow the bringing guards to do their work. That's exactly what Louis Empty is doing. He's focusing on the crossbows on the back. He's definitely got the range to do so. And the crossbows aren't living too long. The Manganel placement in the outpost doing great work. Takes up one ram. The ram can't even path through, to be honest. It's such a big choke point. He's just being pushed away. He can't get through. And this isn't too great a fight here for Beasties. He's taking a lot of damage from the Manganel placement. A couple of uh, man at arms come into the fight. Once again, the numbers are starting to overwhelm. Right? There aren't any crossbows. A couple of landscapes in the mix there for the Byzantines. And the longbow is getting a lot of damage, all things considered. He does have the second attack upgrade, Ballots Projectiles. Those Lance Ganesh are ripping through a lot of these mana times. Takes another massive shot from the Manganel. Emplacement, I should say. And Louis MT will be very happy with how that went. Look at that, 67 military to 29. Sure, Beast has got a great economy. But this undeniably stronger army now for, for Louis. He's got crossbows mixed in as well. That's going to be bad news for these mana times. And that was a painful loss there for Beastie. Will that fight define this match? Quite possibly so. Two sacred sites capped. Could potentially take the third in the middle. And Louis MT is looking in really good control. Beastie has to stall the game out if he can. He's got a great economy behind this, so if he can stall it out, maybe there's a way back. But he's taking some really bad trades. Man Sam's diving on him, but there's just so many crossbows that are doing a lot of job on the back. And there aren't enough range units for Beastie to try and snipe out the crossbows. This is a fight that Beastie can't win. There's no way he wins this. There's just way too many crossbows, way too many longbows, and way too many bringing guards. This army is looking devastating for the Byzantines. Beastie has to retreat back, and bear in mind he's run out of gold on the secondary gold vein. That means it becomes incredibly difficult to, well, get access to gold. We barely got anything. He's just relying on the relic gold coming on in. Tries to get the gold on the right side, but look at this. Louis MT, perfectly placed outpost. Really smart. He's denying the golds massively. Make no mistake about it. That's incredibly pivotal for this match. He's got control on the west side as well. Look at that. Manganel placement outpost. Beasley's really going to struggle to get gold at this point. He's hemorrhaging villages around the back as well. Manatars will eventually clear that up, but not without suffering some more casualties in terms of village account. And he's idling a lot as well. A tenth of the economy idled for Beastie. There's a couple of Laskesh to added into the mix on the farms. And it's really about idle, idling the economy here for Louis MT. He might have to back off at some point though, because he may just be overbiting here. In the meantime though, he's getting an outpost just to make sure he has a position to retreat to. Looking really good for Louis MT. This is a gold vein that Beastie really has to have access to. Where does Beastie go from here? He hasn't got access to gold. Gonna go for stone, maybe he could mark it, trade it. Potentially get a keep in a forward position. But he needs to find a way to get access to gold again. There's no doubt about it. 
gold wins games in Age of Empires 4. And Louis MT knows about it. But he's denying the gold on the map as much as possible. Now, the amount of damage that Louis MT's done is almost equalized the village account incredibly well. Two rams being built by Beast. He's got to find a way to push this back. I mean, he's not down and out just yet. Make no mistake about it. He's got plenty of villagers. Great economy. Louis, though, can we focus on the food income at the boar? Speaking of which, pretty neck and neck food income. Considering the Byzantines have less villagers on food, it's kind of uh, kind of crazy, right? It's water level 5 now. This could be a whopping, whopping 26% gather rate increase and 100% production rate increase on the buildings. With Conscriptio, that's a lot of villagers idled. Holy smokes, beastie. He's got to find them to do something. Yeah, he's trying to make a push there on the west side. Now, might actually take the outpost, but I don't know. If he takes this fight, it could be a bad one in the end. In the meantime, the Byzantines have picked up the third and final sacred site. Springle trying to snipe out the Manganel, but villagers on hand to repair if he needs to. Loses the Springle in the end. There's a couple of Lanskasha. King goes down. Good Manganel shot on the Lungbows there from the English. Those villagers, though, they've been idle for so long. is going to get a keep up, but yeah, he needs to get this up, actually. He needs to stop the push coming from the Byzantines. And he might be okay because of the Manganel. Massive Manganel shot there. Louis MT has to back away. Has one Springle, but Beastie keeping it alive. That Springle, that... Maganar, I should say, by the repairs. And yep, this is looking okay for Beastie for now. He might survive, might take some casualties with more villagers building the keep. Especially the ring and guards diving on in, but... The keep will go up at the end, and Lou MT will be forced back. At least for now. The question is, what does Lou MT do behind this? He does have a siege workshop, so trebuchets could be a nice option for him, actually. Probably is the way to do with this. But Beastie, he's had to be defensive for quite some time. But can he find a way out? That's the question. Now, for the first time in a long time, the Byzantines have actually pulled ahead in village account, which is actually really significant, considering he's the one being aggressive as well. All three Seiko sites, three of the relics, certainly the lion's share. We are seeing the uh, seeing the game turn into a bit of a siege fight, right? Free Springles going to focus on uh, the Manganel if they get a chance. He's actually killing some villagers, would you believe, with the Springles? Kind of funny to see. They do have pretty crazy range, of course. Ten tiles range. Going to focus on the Manganel. The Manganel probably goes down here. We're going to get Stonewall Beastie. Oh, that's so good. Going to protect the Manganel. Manganel gets a good shot off and... He might try and snipe up the villagers, but the stone wall is already pre-built, or somewhat built, so it means that the Springles can't shoot on the Manganel. Great shots from the Manganel coming in. Great play by Beastie. Could this be the clutch play that brings him back into the game? Quite possibly, because Louis MT does need to back away now. And the outpost is going to be taken down by the Ram, so Beastie might... I mean, he's looking to secure gold again. This is a clutch play, actually. Partially built stone wall. And yeah, it's going to get another keep. Quite important to do so. Bear in mind, though, the concerning thing for Beastie is that the Byzantines are looking to go to the Imperial Age. It's got enough food for it, just needs a bit more gold. Well, quite a lot more gold, but I'm sure we'll get there at some point. Especially when you've got three sacred sites in play. He's slowly but surely working on that keep, which, you know, Beastie ideally would have liked to have kept alive for quite some time, but it's going to be a struggle here. It's almost down, actually, in fact. Uh, Ram going to focus on this outpost. I'm not sure if the Ram takes it down in the end. Might just about, but, you know, the outpost does a lot of damage there. With three trebuchets, this is going to be problematic for Beastie. How does he deny the trebuchets? He's going to need Springles, but he doesn't really have the goal for it. This is looking really dicey. 73 miniature to 53, sure. Beastie had the economic advantage for quite some time, but that's not the case anymore. Louis! He's, he's got upwards of almost 20 extra villagers. And he is full, fully population capped. Beastie struggling at 150 at this point, and... With three trebuchets unpacking and shooting off for the keep, Beastie has to somehow survive long enough to get as much gold as possible to try and get to the Imperial Age if he can. The Berkshire Palace could offer him some value, but you know, gold spent on Imperial Age means not gold spent on units, and he may have no choice though, because it will be the foreign engineering company coming in for the Byzantines. Looks like Beastie trying to challenge the army, but it's going to be too little too late. The villagers have to get pulled to repair the keep if he wants to have any chance of keeping that alive. Because our three trebuchets on this. Lantarms are starting to work on the longbow, so the Byzantines might back away. Now that he's taken the keep, I think he does back away. Although there is a Manganel placement, a Manganel, regular Manganel, in fact, for the, the Byzantines. So maybe he takes the fight. 
But that's a good number of mana times coming on in. Another Mangonel popping up, though, for the Byzantines. It's a pretty interesting fight, this one. A good number of longbows remain for the Byzantines, but not for long with those, in, those are the amount of times going on top of it. Yeah, he's going to go and try and snipe out the Mangonel. He might get it in the end, potentially. We have to see. But there is the Imperial Age, and wouldn't be surprised to see the Imperial Age upgrades coming on in. That's going to be hard to deal with for Beast. He does snipe out one Mangonel. I'm not sure if he gets a second. I don't think he does in the end. He's safe and secure with that second Mangonel here, the Byzantines. There's the Berkshire Palace going on the gold. He needs to protect the gold. I mean, how much is left? Yeah, 2,500, but if you can get access to this one as well, it could be pivotal. Louis's army is going to be upgraded first, most likely. So we get ferocious speed. Varingian guards increase their movement speed by 30% whilst activating Berserking. They could really run in and do some damage. Beastie does not get to the Imperial Age. Is that the signal for Beastie? Or Louis MT, rather, to attack Beastie? Quite possibly. Is, will he be able to afford a network of citadels? The answer's a uh, kind of a no. Gonna go for enclosures first, of course. He needs the extra gold coming in that way. So if Beastie can survive a little bit longer, at least he'll get some passive gold generation. But it feels a bit of a. Uh, it's just not that strong, right? When you compare the olive oil, I think, from the Byzantines coming on in. 900 olive oil per, per minute. Considering, you know, the longbows. Take 500 olive oil. Trains every 38 seconds, so he's probably going to get, you know, at least a longbowman batch at least every minute. A little bit quicker than that. Berkshire Palace almost down. This is not looking too good for Beastie. I mean, these mm, these these trebuchets have done so much work. They're taking down one keep. And if he does lose the Berkshire Palace here, this is going to be problematic. He's going to suffer from wood. He doesn't have enough wood here, Beastie, to repair. This is not looking good. He has to push. He has to push now. He has to take care of those trebuchets. He hasn't got any anti-siege though. No springles in play. There's even a nest of bees coming out there for Louis MT. Great unit addition. It's so powerful for this stage of the game. Of course, powered by the foreign engineering company. Elite Ferengian guards for the Byzantines. Only regular castle age mana times for the English. Can't afford anything more, of course. And that Berkshire Palace dangerously low on health. He's got a couple of lands cash to add it in. This is not looking good for Beastie. That's a lot of army for Louis. Sure, Beastie's got the numbers, but the problem is the trebuchets. If he loses his Berkshire Palace, he's going to be running out of gold access, and gold is what he needs to replace the army. It's mostly longbows at this point here for Beastie, going up against elite Varingian guards. That's not really where he wants to be. These are veteran longbowmen, by the way. Only the Castle Age variation. Nesta B's pushing forward as well. That's it. Longbow's worst nightmare. This combination, way too strong. The Varingian guards, Nesta B's. Long way mass here from the English just won't be able to hold on. But just keep trying to repair the Berkshire Palace, but it's a heavy, heavy wood cost to pre uh, attached to it. And oh no, the Nesta Bees, they could unpack on the villagers if they do. That could be a slaughter. Beastie going to try and torch down the Nesta Bees. Might get one, but the trouble is, if he's torching down the Nesta Bees, there's no one repairing the Berkshire Palace. Nesta Bees fires off the long moment first. Strelts are coming into the play. That's such a big. Big sign. Well, hand cannon is, in fact, for the Byzantines. Loses the Berkshire Palace. Villagers don't know what to do with themselves. Can't get to the gold. I mean, he, he's going to get there, but the Ringing Guards, they berserk their way through, and Beastie taps out. Great game for Age of Empires for a cracking one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a classic. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and see you next time.